Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec podcast episode. This one is going to be super fascinating because I'm joined again by Miko from ChemPower, who's head of R&D. We've already done an episode together discussing some of the technical engineering of ChemPower. Um, but in this episode, we are digging into the software that actually runs their charging stations. And this has always been a mystery to the end user because drivers never get to see what happens behind the scenes, how charging stations are managed, how to integrate software updates, all of these things. And Miko kindly has uh, brought in the ChargeEye software by ChemPower and is going to walk us through a high level of how this software works. So thanks for joining again, Miko. Kyle, it's really nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Well, let's dig into Charger. I'm going to pull it up for our YouTube viewers right here. So can you explain briefly what this system is? I know every charging manufacturer and some CPOs have their own versions of this, but can you explain why or how this is used and its capabilities? Uh, this is this is our backend, uh, so every single charging session is recorded and and stored to our our backend. So we can we can we can follow up uh, uh, how how is all all charges live and and uh, and we can also browse history of, of different different charges. See, this is a lot. We have been using that a lot uh, to to analyze uh, what will be best way. To, to control charts and and best logic to say say power and so on. Very interesting. Well, this is fascinating. I can't thank you enough for showing us this because um, this is really one of the unique points of ChemPower is the software side of things. Of course, reliability can come from hardware engineering, but a lot of charging problems that we run into out in the public have to do with interoperability, have to do with software, not managing things correctly. And so the fact that you're doing so much more through software that I've seen from almost any other charging manufacturer is really next level. For example, in the previous episode, you mentioned you can tell through your own proprietary way roughly what car is plugging into your charger because each car has their own unique fingerprint, if you will. They have their own set of parameters that you can kind of tell what's plugging into it, even if they're not doing a certificate exchange. So can you briefly tell our viewers how that works and maybe how that ties into this system? Uh, it works so that that uh, <clears throat> that we are while we are recording all sessions, uh, we are we are taking uh, some some uh, different differentiators uh, so that that, that 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 some markers from from charging session. Uh, we have around 10, 10 different markers, and and uh, and uh, uh, then we are we have a couple of. Uh, Charging stations where where we have a register plate uh, recognition, and and uh, in Norway you can you can uh, get get uh, uh, vehicle information from open database if you know uh, register plate. So uh, that is then used to to teach our system, so that we are we are we are taking these ten markers. And later on, we find out that that uh, that uh, this is this is Volkswagen ID bus. And, that... and later, later on, all those uh, those cars that are having these markers are, are uh, claimed to ID bus. That is so cool. And yes, I have seen the license plate readers in Norway that we have a, someone who uses Rate Your Charge on Twitter in Norway, and he goes around and films reviews of charging stations. And there was one that was near Bergen or somewhere on the west coast of Norway where he pulled in, it scanned his license plate, and then it directed him to the ChemPower stall that could properly match the power output for his car. And I thought this was really interesting that it said, you know, go use this charger. And it, you know, had that ready to go. So um, let's, can you take us on a quick demonstration of the charge eye? And would the charge point operator have access to this? Or is this something that only ChemPower uses internally? This is, this is now ChemPower view, but, but our, our advanced customers are also getting, getting this information. 
Mm. Uh, this is this is actually live view uh, to one of our customers uh, charging station, but uh, because we are not of course uh, showing our customers info, uh, we are I'm I'm using a privacy filter, so so this one is not in Bangkok. But, uh, right, sure. I was going to say you uh, put the charges. Uh, addresses and names are, are uh, uh, filtered. I see, but this is a real charging station that we've logged into. Um, you know, somewhere unknown location that's uh, not made up. This is a real, real data from a real charger. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So this this one is uh, two cabinets. Uh, I can click in, so it's it's full, fully equipped. There so is uh, each module when you click in. No way. Yes, yes, I can see each modules. I can see see also uh, which one of those are charging. And, and power that they are using. I can I can see some some temperatures uh, inside the module, <clears throat> and oh, and I, I I can sorry. even I can even see now there's Tesla Model Three charging and these two uh, power channels are used. Right. So basically, that's what I was curious about. So the Volkswagen is charging on a separate set of modules than the Tesla is charging on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Volkswagen, cool. Volkswagen now it's using. Uh, it will take uh, ninety four kilowatts and and using six uh, power channels. Right, that's very interesting. But then if you go over to the Tesla, uh, we can highlight that and see the different modules. There we go. So that's pretty high state of charge. Then yeah, ninety three percent. They're going all the way up. Hmm. Um, so very interesting. They only need two power modules because they're pulling very little power. <clears throat> That's true. That's true. Very cool. So that would be fascinating. I would play around with this all day. <laughs> um, <laughs> that is so neat. What uh, What else can we see with this system? Uh, we can then also see see if 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 I go to this point uh, in different different time slot. Uh, there's a uh, now now forecast uh, charging. Uh, <clears throat> I can I can look at the uh, Volkswagen ID bus. Uh, it came uh, seven to four and and uh, I can I can look at how, how is the uh, power oh, graph. No way that's awesome! So <laughs> you can just like. You could just publish these <laughs> and let us know what all the cars charging curves are. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah, and we, we also know how, how they are in different uh, weather conditions, especially when, when temperature is something else than, than plus 20. This is so neat. I mean, I know other uh, charging hardware manufacturers do have the ability to show some power curves and things like this, but I don't think I've ever seen software that allows you to go to a point in time to show utilization on this timeline that you have here and to know exactly what's going on. So is this a live view, what you just panned to right now? Yeah, this is live, live view right now. Right now, there's uh, only one car charging Mercedes EQA. Yep. And, and, uh, right. They have terrible charging power. So maximum 100 or so, 95 maximum. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing crazy yeah, bad here. Yeah. But uh, most probably weather is, uh, is, is not the optimal and, and, uh, and car can also be cold. So, sure. but, but any, anyhow. So now it's in uh, in the uh, uh, state of charge is uh, thirty two percent. It's and if it's uh, it takes fifty minutes until it's full. Wow, that's so, really not bad for a charging curve. And you're predicting this time to one hundred percent based off of the car or based off of your own data charging other EQAs. Uh, own data based on other e EQAs. Wow, that is next level. That is so cool. And and who came up with this idea to log everything and learn from it and use the data to do future analysis? Was that your idea? Or was that some of your colleagues or how did that work? Yeah, it, it was it was our our team's idea. 
uh, and and uh, because um, without without knowing uh, exactly what cars are doing, you cannot develop yourself. Sure. Uh, so so we we first uh, first uh, tackled this this identification issue uh, so that we we can. We can because we saw that, that 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 some of the cars are having more problems than others. Uh, so we need to know what is the what is the uh, car brand and type uh, in order to 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 be efficient in in corrective actions. And and uh, and then uh, then when when knowing cars, uh, we we started to collect data and and uh, and clustering uh, this data. So that so that we can learn from a similar car cars. It's fascinating. This is really good stuff. So obviously, you can do charging predictions with this data. You can you know reference charging curves. I'm sure you can even see when an automaker issues an update and the curve changes a little bit, and you'll be able to see these mm-hmm. trends over time. Um, and and we can maybe do a whole nother episode on what you've learned from the data because it would be fascinating to see the average charging power probably be higher in the summertime than the winter time, I would think, um, which would be very interesting to see. But let's dig a little bit more into charge eyes. So obviously you can see the temperatures of the modules, everything on the charging side. You can see everything on what the car is doing. But what about things like total site level power sharing, um, all of these situations, how is that all controlled? Uh, we can see see this over there. Uh, uh, we we can see how how different days are. So uh, so yesterday uh, was uh, it was not so busy day. Only only uh, eight hundred forty five uh, kilowatt hours. Uh, we can see it's an every every uh, charging session. Wow! Different. And you can see that there's one just a couple above that says 324 minutes. And what uh, what happened there was they charged, completed, and then they left the car sitting there. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Uh, interesting. But then, when 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 going to <clears throat> connectors uh, uh, and, and dispensers, uh, we have uh, developed also features that that that, that uh, uh, support can use if if some of some of the customer has has problems with with his uh, charging session or car. Uh, we can take a look how how is the screen. What's stated in, in the sc- ah, screen? Ah, interesting. So this is on the user displayed of the charger. You just took a screenshot of what they're seeing. That's incredible. Exactly. Wow. And um, well, that, that was really my question is like, how do you know what the user sees? Well, there you go. That's pretty amazing. Uh, can you talk to me a little bit about managing the station over time? Obviously, ChemPower will release software updates to deploy to their units. And I was talking to Tommy a little bit about how you're able to deploy software to the charger. It can sit locally on the charger before you actually install it. That way you can choose a really, you know, middle of the night when no usage, the site can go down for five minutes or however long it takes, install the software. But then you save the previous version on the unit uh, so that if there is an issue, you can go back locally. How, is that all controlled with this software as well? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's good to have two versions uh, downloaded to the to the system uh, because always something can happen while while downloading, and you you can then swap back to the previous version if if you face some problems. And well, and we we are downloading new software uh, uh, during the day. But then, uh, uh, when during the night, it's it's uh, changed uh, while while there is no one uh, charging at the same time. And is that something that the CPO can decide when to deploy the software, or is that a chem power decision, or how does this work? We are we are always discussing with CPOs, uh, uh, giving giving. Uh, uh, 
software release uh, notes to them uh, what will be changes in new software and and uh, and with some some cpos we are also uh, testing mm -hmm. testing uh, just to be sure that that uh, also they uh, backend works well with with uh, our new firmware Right, but, because of course this is on the the hardware side. This is your software, but yeah. most CPOs will have a second piece of software to manage the billing, processing, and all of these mm -hmm. things outside of this. Now, can this handle plug and charge activation with billing, or is that a separate piece of equipment that's not done in Charge Eye? Uh, can 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 do this uh, plug and charge, or, but uh, this capability is also required from CPO backend. So mm -hmm. not only not only charge size is, is uh, enough. Right, that makes sense. That makes sense. So, is there anything else in Charge Eye that is uh, that you think would be interesting for our audience to see? Obviously, I'm just thrilled with just seeing what modules are delivering the power. It's so cool. But is there anything else typically that you would show uh, people about the Charge Eye software that we're missing? Um, <clears throat> one of those things is is that 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 uh, that. that uh, energy energy that that we are charging per week is is increasing all the time mm. uh, now now it's um, if if i count all all those stations together uh, uh, last week we were uh, charging uh, 3.2 gigawatt hours wow and that's across all chem power sites exactly exactly so if 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 you calculated it, something like uh, sixteen to eighteen million kilometers with passenger car. That is crazy. That is so cool. And because you have the master account, obviously you can track all of that. Uh, but that is uh, next level. And I can't wait to see the stats in the U.S. I mean, I really think it's possible that you may dispense more electricity in America in a few years than you do in Europe. And the reason I say that is people drive a lot more here. We need more energy. We drive, mm -hmm. you know, higher speeds with less efficient vehicles. Rivians, F-150 Lightnings are very popular here. And, uh, you know, I think our energy demand is going to be higher than European drivers will be. So it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. Um, but Miko, I can't thank you enough for showing us this Charge Eye software. If I had access to this, I would get no work done because I would log in and see every charging session. I'd figure out who's idling, who left the charger there, and I'd drive over there and say, move your car. Uh, you know, it's just an amazing uh, situation. Very cool. And I uh, can't thank you enough for showing it to us. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, we'll see you all on another podcast episode soon. Thanks again to Miko. Thanks to Chem Power. This was truly fascinating. And we'll catch you on another one soon. Bye-bye.